The Godfather, Goodfellas, and The Sopranos make mafia life seem dangerously glamorous. But in reality, the day-to-day -day operations of the mob are often much duller than what we see on screen. Work can be surprisingly laborious, money can be scarce, and it's almost impossible to move up in the ranks. Today, we're taking a look at what it's really like to be in the Mafia. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel, and leave us a comment to let us know what other true crime stories you would like to hear about. Okay, time to analyze this. Hey, they can't all be Godfather references. If you've ever watched a Scorsese movie, you're probably familiar with the Golden Age of the Mob, which began around the 1920s and lasted through the 1970s. Former made men say that while organized crime does still exist, being in the business is nothing like it used to be. Whether you're sitting at a desk job talking real estate, managing a construction site, or running a money laundering restaurant, it's a far cry from the extortion, shakedowns, and shootouts of decades past. You know, the good old days. And while many mafioso also cite the golden age as a time of honor and loyalty, they argue that those times no longer exist. Now, everyone breaks the rules. Yeah, that's right. The mob has a strict set of rules, like a country club with guns. First, you have to be a full-blooded Italian to join the gang, which, yeah, everyone knows that. John Panisi, formerly of the Lucchese crime family, shared that mobsters aren't allowed to whack women and children, but they also can't be intentionally involved in lawsuits or even invest in the stock market. Imagine getting rolled up in a carpet for investing in Amazon. Because the Mafia was notorious for using explosive devices in Italy, mob soldiers were banned from using them in the US. But that didn't stop them from placing a bomb underneath Gambino underboss Frankie De Chico's car in 1986. And despite observing a strict policy against drug dealing at the time, each of the five families has had at least one member tied to a drug-related business. The Enterprise brings in too much money to prevent guys from dabbling. Remember in Goodfellas when Polly tells Henry not to get involved in drugs because of the heavy prison sentences associated with them. And he does it anyway because it's just too much cash? Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, that was a good movie. Roles in the Mafia are highly specialized to ensure that no one person ever knows the full spectrum of a family's criminal enterprise. As a teen, you'll most likely drive other made men around as they do their business. Imagine getting excited for your first day in the mob only to realize you're a wise guy Uber. Entire families of blood relatives often join the syndicate under a particular profession, such as assassins or bodyguards. Or drivers, I guess. Capos, or captains, are often defined as the leaders of specific criminal activities in a detailed location. For instance, one capo may be in charge of everything west of a particular neighborhood block, while another would be in charge of illegal gambling. Suppose you're not officially inducted and are just an associate, or worse, a seasonal employee. Jeez, might as well go work at the mall. In that case, you'll most likely remain in whatever position you had as a civilian, because that's the role that determined your usefulness to the family. These roles include, but are not limited to, bookkeepers, drug dealers, politicians, and law enforcement. When you're in the mob, la familia takes priority over your actual familia. Women are rarely recruited into the business, and children from families with mafia ties usually recall later that they rarely saw their fathers. Instead of showing up for family picnics, little league games, or other family-related events, made men show their affection by giving their loved ones expensive gifts. Sometimes buying their love worked, but those kids who want a life outside of organized crime often resent that they grew up without their fathers around. Former made man Frankie Di Matteo, whose father and grandfather were involved in the Colombo Mafia, recalled what it was like growing up. By 10, you notice your uncles are a lot different from other people. They're whispering, and then there are people coming around and they dress differently than other families. By 12 or 13, I knew who everybody was. Speaking of kids, it's not uncommon for children to witness violence at a young age. Like the son of mobster Giuseppe De Chico, who discovered the bodies of his two uncles when he was 11 years old, after hearing the gunshots that suddenly ended their lives. When the Mafia decides you're done, you're done, no matter how many of your nephews are around to see it. As bad as it was being the kid of a Mafia man, it was just as tough being the wife of one. And we don't just mean Carmela Soprano constantly wondering whether Tony was cheating on her. Some women who have tried to leave their mobster husbands have become victims of physical, emotional, and psychological abuse, kidnapping, and even murder. 
Consequently, it's not unheard of for former mob wives to go into hiding or even take their own lives. The Mafia runs on funds, and those funds don't always come easily. Just because you're raking in the dough for the family business doesn't mean the organized crime hustle will make you rich. Most of the money goes back into the organization to pay off high interest loans. And the work you do isn't quite as exciting as what you see in the movies. Wise guys are on call 24 seven, and they don't get their paychecks automatically deposited in a bank account like a Best Buy employee. You get paid when the Don decides the job is finished. And while you can't expect to be paid for the overtime, you can expect to get your kneecaps tapped if you sit too close to a made man's wife during a job. Even though organized crime does have a documented connection with labor unions, wise guys can't exactly unionize. Because the mob hierarchy is specifically designed to keep bosses out of prison, most members have specific mundane jobs that keep them from gaining too much information about the organization. Bosses expect bodyguards to be available at all times to protect their families and can be called at a moment's notice. If you're a family associate, expect to do a lot of manual labor, which makes the 24-hour dress code seem all the more unreasonable. Don't worry though, you'll more likely be required to unload trucks than dispose of bodies. Although extortion, prostitution, and drug rings compromise some of the mob's income, they need bigger jobs to keep the cash flow steady and out of the public eye. Hijacking big rigs full of clothes and stereo equipment was one of notorious crime boss John Gotti's favorite ways to make a quick buck in his early days. However, these weren't fast and furious heists, or even Butch and Sundance heists. Mafioso would simply bribe truck drivers to misplace crates of goods for their associates to pick up later. That means if you're a low-level associate, much of your day-to-day -day is going to be backbreaking work loading and unloading contraband, like heavy jukeboxes and hundreds of cases of cigarettes. Frankly, at this point, prison isn't looking so bad. When you're in the mob, expect to follow a strict dress code. The type and style of clothing varies depending on which family you belong to, but you should always dress to impress, because if you don't look good, businessmen won't take you seriously. According to mob survivor Frank DiMatteo, there were two acceptable styles, a shirt and tie, or button-down knit shirts and sweaters for when you were in the club in the daytime. And never sneakers. No word on velour tracksuits. Well, at least when you get pinched doing all that waste management, you can relax your style, right? Wrong. Turns out you're expected to dress the part of a good fella even if you end up in prison. For instance, the Sagaria family wears Samsonite shoes with cashmere socks and designer clothes, even when locked in the slammer. Meanwhile, the Schiavone group requires its members to maintain impeccable grooming standards, with well-trimmed beards and absolutely no hair gel. But good news, tattoos are A-OK. -okay. What about a tattoo of a sneaker? Hmm, better not push your luck. Conducting all of your mafia business securely requires a surprising amount of tax forms and paperwork. After all, remember what happened to Al Capone. You can't just stash your money in a regular bank account. Instead, you need to launder it, which can get tedious. Bars that don't do well are the perfect place to hide extra income, because they deal with a lot of cash. So the money can move quietly through mob hands while the business makes relatively small tax contributions. Still, gangsters need a bunch of these shells in order to ensure the operation's success, meaning that each dive bar requires its own tax return. The more successful your underground business is, the more paperwork you'll have to complete for all your business fronts. Sounds like it's time to make H&R Block an offer they can't refuse. If you join one of the five families in the hopes of eventually becoming Don Corleone, it's unlikely you'll ever reach your career goals. Each gang in the Mafia is considered a family, and each family has roughly between 10 and 100 members. Each association has only one boss, followed by the underboss. Next in line come the captains, followed by the made men. Everyone else who works for the family is called an associate, and there is a big hierarchical gap between them and the rest of the crew. Dons must approve new family branches, and new groups are rare. The boss makes all the decisions for the entire syndicate, and, just like any other manager, also benefits from receiving most of the family income. Some underbosses occasionally make decisions without consulting their Don, but the power they hold varies. Often the underboss serves as an apprentice in case his Don gets too old to conduct meetings, is sentenced to prison, or gets sent to sleep with the fishes. They're like the vice president, 
Capos lead their own sections of the family and are often stationed in a specific geographic location. Soldiers conduct most of the dirty work and are considered the family's bottom members. Dons also employ associates, but they aren't made men and are usually just experienced robbers or dirty politicians. And because each person holds a specific job, moving up in the family ranks is rare. That's a real bulletproof glass ceiling. While Hollywood definitely takes liberties when creating mafia stories, some former wise guys claim that certain details of mob life are so accurate, the writers must have worked with made guys as consultants. And just like any other business arrangement, Hollywood and the mob share a mutually beneficial relationship. As classic films like The Godfather, Casino, and Goodfellas create intrigue and appeal for broader audiences, some mafioso have been able to capitalize on the mystique by sharing their experiences in the media. For example, recently Sammy the Bull Gravano and Joe Panizzi both contributed to podcasts detailing their lives as gangsters, which is further proof that no one can resist telling their life story on a podcast. So what do you think? Would you want to be a wise guy? Tell us why or why not in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.